Folks, uh, if you watch the show, you know I'm a bit of a tech geek. I don't want to brag, but my car has both AM and FM. <laughs> That's why I'm so excited to launch my brand new gadget celebrating segment tonight. We were going to call it Tech Talk. And we planned an opening graphic with some amazing 3D, you know, like nanobots exploding off the screen and, and then forming the words Tech Talk, and then the Tech Talk nanobots explode and become tiny nanobots that form my face, which say the words Tech Talk. <laughs> like nothing anybody's ever seen, and they never will, because we thought of it about one o'clock today, and there was no time to make it. <laughs> so instead, this is true, I looked around my office and I noticed that I, uh, <laughs> I own a didgeridoo. <laughs> so we decided to call our tech segment Digital Do. It's a rich and versatile instrument. <laughs> First up, on digital do, wearable technology. Folks, I don't leave the house without my Google Glass, my Apple Watch, and two Nintendo Power Gloves. <laughs> you never know when you might be attacked by an 8-bit Mike Tyson. <laughs> so I'm always looking for new ways to put computers on my body, which is why my Wi-Fi was at full bars when I heard that Google and Levi's are now collaborating to make smart pants. It's about time my old dumb pants can even remember my waist size. <laughs> it's 32, you idiot. You're strangling me. You can't feel my butt. Apparently, Google's developing a new digital type of fabric that you can touch and it can feel it, and it also Bluetooths to your phone. So now you can swipe the side of your jeans to mute your phone, even tap the fabric for playing any song, which means pretty soon all your calls can be butt dials. <laughs> and thanks to the new Google Smart Pants, you won't have to reach all the way into your pocket to use your phone. You can just swipe the outside of your pocket, saving you several precious seconds per day. And that's time you could spend explaining to the police why you're rubbing your crotch in public. <laughs> Next up on Digital Do, it might be hard to believe, but I'm old enough to have children that I know of. And any parent will tell you that teenagers these days are masters of tech. But there's a new technology that will help parents master the teens. A new line of cars could play tattletale on teen drivers. General Motors will install an optional system in some 2016 Chevy Malibu models that will compile a touchscreen report card for parents. It keeps track of how far your teen drove and their top speed. That's right. Soon, GM cars will have a new way to let parents know how their teens are driving. And it's much safer than the old way, texting your teen while they're driving. <laughs> The technology is called Teen Driver. It's available only in the 2016 Chevy Malibu. And parents, it's fully scalable to your exact inability to sleep at night. For instance, it can sound an alert when teens drive faster than a speed limit predetermined by the parents. As for what that sound alert should be, I recommend a prairie home companion. Because it's impossible for a teen to joyride while listening to an elderly man reminisce about rhubarb pie. And the system automatically compiles data on how many times teens pass those limits and makes that data accessible to any parent with a PIN number, which is a great security feature after your teen teaches you how to use it. <laughs> teen Driver also prevents kids from bumping their jams by disabling the vehicle's audio system when the driver and front passengers aren't buckled. Though, once you are buckled, the music's banging. But you're still in a Chevy Malibu. It's only going to get so cool. <laughs> Next up. <laughs> it 
Selfies. They're fun, they bring people together, and they eliminate the awkwardness of having to ask your roommate to take a picture of your junk. <laughs> but some of the most popular types of selfies are people doing something dangerous, like posing with bears or running with bulls. And as fun as that looks, not all those photos end well. For example, two men died in Russia while taking a selfie holding a hand grenade with the pin pulled. The mobile phone with the selfie survived as a record. Now, first of all, that's a tragedy. Second of all, what kind of phone case were they using? Because it must be pretty good. Now, sure, the grenade probably holds some of the responsibility here. But let's not lose sight of one clear fact. Selfies are killing people. But I don't want to panic you. I'll leave that to the news. Death by selfie. A disturbing trend here. Selfies killing people. They kill more people than sharks over a 12-month period. There have been 12 selfie-related deaths versus eight reported shark fatalities. Okay, that was a lot of technical information to digest. I'm really glad they made this chart. <laughs> let me walk you through, let me walk you through some of the data. Let me crunch it for you. That's the number 12. That's the number eight. And up here, that line is 20. Now, I just want to warn... I want to warn my viewers out there. You're taking too many selfies. Don't do it. It's just too dangerous. Also, stop getting attacked by so many sharks. <laughs> it isn't safe. Though, if you are getting attacked by a shark, by all means, take a selfie. Because, <laughs> man, your Instagram is going to blow up.